Hey guys, we're back. We know it's been a while, but we know that you guys still want to know what's going on with our bodies. It's and been highly anticipated. So, this time we're going to be organized. We wrote down questions and topics that we get asked most frequently. Um, I did do a, uh, like a little poll on Instagram not too long ago to ask what did you guys want to know specifically because we are, you know, still doing the whole journey vlog, but this was just straight to the point. Um, so our first one is... I didn't even read over there. Our doctor and why we chose him. So you want to go first? Well, okay. hers is probably going to matter more because the only reason why I chose him was because she chose him and then boom. So that okay. was it. My end of story for me. <laughs> so the reason why I chose the doctor that I chose and we chose is one, he is double board certified. Can we say his name? Dr. Plazas. Luis Plaza. In Colombia. Love him. Yeah. So he um, is double board certified, which is a plus. Um, he does have his own recovery house and he makes sure like if he does surgery on you, he's it's in like the stipulations like you cannot stay at no other like Airbnb, hotel, anything, no accommodations. Like you have to stay at his recovery house. And I figure, you know, it's a whole liability thing. Like you ain't gonna say like, oh, I caught, you know, some bacteria infection or something and try to blame it on the doctor. No. Which I recommend a lot of fucking doctors start doing this. Cause one, you're getting money for it. Um, and two, I don't know. It's just, it's so comforting the over overall care knowing and it's peace of mind knowing that you're going to be taken care of because i didn't know what the fuck we were got ourselves into all i know is we'll get to that yeah point we'll get to it because fuck okay next what thing do you have? um he had zero debts so that's a plus a lot of doctors out there be having debts so if you, you know definitely do your research on your doctor and all of that um also he did have a long wait list so we waited a year for our date so that mm -hmm. was you know a green flag it we're not even going to talk about other surgeons so yes that was it um and then also so my whole insecurity was that i don't have i didn't have hips i was hipless so um dr plazas is the number one surgeon in colombia for hips and that came straight out of my coordinator's mouth Shout out, Surgeon Maid. Um, and then also a plus that he spoke English. So a lot of these doctors in DR and Columbia and stuff, yeah. they, they don't speak English, you know. So I felt comfortable being able to be able to speak to him directly and let him know exactly what I wanted and all of that. And any questions? Because let me tell you, them nurses, they don't, they are not gonna. Um, how do you say <laughs> translate for shit, bro? Like in the recovery home, they were great. In the hospital, they're horrible, horrible people. But that'll be a story time. Um, okay, second. Everybody always wants to know the cost. How much did you spend? And I like say, I don't even know my full cost. I, I kinda yeah, guesstimated it. I feel around like we it. should just estimate it. Um, so I did, you know, the lipo to my uh chin, my arms, and then 360 lipo, meaning stomach, back, all of that, and uh BBL. So I paid average about ten thousand for everything. Her, do you want to say, we, we, she got everything I got done, but except for she got boobs. So. Yeah, so then, I don't know, mine was probably like another, whatever she paid, I probably paid like another six grand on top of it. Yeah, pretty so much. probably like 15, 16 mm -hmm. for hers. But, dude, that included everything. Like yeah. I said, I pretty much, I could tell people, I'm like, I got from my chin down all the way to my fucking kneecaps type shit done. You feel me? <laughs> but, um, no, that included, like, our plane costs and our everything. recovery. The recovery home. Our supplies. Yeah. Faha. All of that. Mas you so need the massages. Faha. Yeah, so... Um, which we did tell you guys we would give you guys a video which will probably not be this one will be in another one of shit that you're gonna need that they you know that you really really need and stuff that you don't really need as much you know yeah because we filmed the supply list but the, we majority used everything though we may not have had to take it with us but i know like i used all my creams and all that see i wasn't that good i didn't use my creams but we have different results so use the creams <laughs> <laughs> um okay next thing um Everybody wants to know how we felt when we woke up. So you could go ahead and go first because I've been talking. Ew, okay. 
fuck can i just start from not even let's back it up a little bit from not even how i felt when i first woke up but how i felt on the surgery table because you know they put you on a table and you're like a t-shape and like you're laying your legs are all spread out and shit like a starfish and i don't know dude i felt so scared i felt like what the fuck i thought of her i thought of her i'm like what the fuck did she get me into like i, I was like at that point i'm like i blame I'm, I'm not saying none of this out loud i'm thinking all this in my head like i fucking blame little one for everything and it's her fault she's the only reason why i'm here <laughs> the only reason why i'm going through this shit then i start thinking about my kids like bro this is gonna be the last time i close my eyes and i wake up and i see the world and it's around people that don't understand what i'm saying i'm over there trying to tell them what breast size i want like <laughs> remember it's like this oh my god i was so scared so that was the that was my last thought of i was gonna die on that table and then when i woke up bitch i was dying i <laughs> i was so scared i was in so much fucking pain like as soon as you open up your eyes and you kind of like look around and you can't even lift up your body or nothing like all i could do was move my hand from side to side and dude i was so fucking scared i was in so much pain like your whole fucking body because mind you i got my boobs done my ass my whole stomach you feel me and i had more fat than she did like i'm not gonna lie they they fucking flattened my back out like that shit is it's straight but before you know i had a little bit of uh, uh, right here but immediately after waking up immediately after i was waking cold up. as shit i was hella cold okay hold, I hold, was on. Out of it. hold on pause See, this is where we need a person that's going to edit our shit because they're going to, like, put some little shit flashing behind us. Anyways, um, no. So, I was there. She got her surgery done. What was it? Three days before mine? Four days before four. mine? Four days before. Um, mine got pushed back just because of some fucking COVID, uh, like, Related, vac yeah. vaccine type of shit. So, they made me wait. But anyways, I was there to take care of her. Like, they told me, like, visiting hours were over at, like, 8 o'clock or whatever. She didn't even get out until, like, 10 o'clock. I'm like, you got me fucked up. I'm not leaving nowhere. So, I know my sister is good. She's out of the bed. So, I was able to stay with her and wait for her to get into the recovery room. Um, and, uh, yeah, sh her feet were hella cold and she was all shaky and shit like that. But, go ahead. How did you feel? I'm just, it's kind of fucked up because I was there to take care of her. But when I came out, she I was, was fucked up. She was she able, was in surgery. And so. I was by myself. So that was a little. Actually, no, this is totally unrelated. But while you were in surgery, that was my worst fucking day. I swear to God. Fifth day, fifth day was the worst fucking day for me. Um, I just, my body just did not feel good. Um, okay. So then you were cold. So when you first woke up, you were hella cold that's really right. it i was out of it like i was drugged the fuck up off of whatever they drugged me with i i woke up for a minute i seen her there oh she i had a force i made i forced you to drink your gatorade and shit because they make you take gatorade and what what juice was it mango juice i think oh, yeah. i think it's mango juice and um they make you drink that like right after surgery i don't know if it's a, it's just supposed to make you feel better i don't know if the electrolytes or sugar oh vitamins. and i had her put back in my tongue ring I remember oh, that. Oh, yeah. I remember that. Because I was scared, you know, the tongue heals hella fast. So I was like, bitch. <laughs> Your tongue got twisted saying that, huh? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I yeah, it. I remember waking up, like, uh, she's putting in my tongue ring, knock back out. That was it. Yeah, she told me, she's like, it's taped to my phone. So I had to pull it apart and everything and trying to, I'm like sticking, she's sticking her tongue out and her tongue's all slimy. You <laughs> Again, I had to put my own fucking tongue ring back in. <laughs> like, <laughs> okay um do we want to talk about the massage where are we at the massage horror stories we can save that for story time we'll yeah. save that for story time just know that you need to get massages at our recovery house they were included we did have to get additional extra we paid out of cost massage 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 it's very important but story time for our massages will be a little bit later because that uh, shit is it's a horror scene on its own y'all need a separate video for that so the only thing that we want to say now about the massages is that they're horrific they're painful as fuck like but it's like what the fuck are you gonna do you already put yourself through this hell so and you know you have to get this done it's like mandatory either that or else your stomach should be all bumpy fucked up results you're gonna have fibrosis for sure yeah so it's like you know we had no choice but let me tell you but you know what it's weird because when you when you get it done it's very painful you don't like it it's it's very antagonizing you know but at the same time once you're done with it because you go and shower and everything and you come your your body feels different like 
I don't know how to explain it. Like without the massage, you feel like somebody poured concrete on you and the concrete dried and it now hurts. you're just stiff. You're stiff you fuck. can't fucking move. So but once then, you get that massage, you're like a little bit more limber and everything. Like yeah. you just feel a little bit better. You still feel fucked up. Don't get it fucked up. You still feel fucked up. But it it relieves it a little bit. Um, okay, next. Our best experience and worst experience. Ooh. Best experience, I think, from overall. Are we talking about aftercare, right? Like, after? Oh, I don't know. Or, like, that's, that's a broad range. So, if we stick to afterwards, um, I would say just having my best experience is having them there. The nurses, the nurses there. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. Because best experience was having the recovery house with all those nurses. All the different amenities that they had. Because there's stuff that we don't know about, like... Um, like certain fruit has certain natural, you know, remedies that it's going to do for your body. Like it's going to help with, um, your swelling. Yeah. Or the blood clots or anything, you know, stuff like that. That's, it's healthy. You know, you just, it's just you drinking a cup of juice or whatever, but it's hella beneficial. And the recovery house, like when we say they're hella helpful, the nurses are helping you get up no matter what time of day. If it's three in the morning, you call and them. And they're so loving. They're not like, oh my God, like people that hate their job. They're really like, oh, are you okay? Are you okay, yeah. baby? Like, okay, you're, you know, you're going to look good. Coca-Cola. Coca <laughs> That's what they kept saying. Coca-Cola. Yeah. Yeah, and even when you're sad and you feel down, they're there to talk to you. They're there to tell you, like, it's okay. You're going to Even though there's this. a language barrier, you know, it's like they know enough English to make you feel good. Like, you mm -hmm. know, some stuff you do got to pull out your Google Translator and all that, but they're helping you to the bathroom. They're helping you shower. I couldn't even you put feed your myself, on. dude. Yeah. My and it's like she like, don't even need to she didn't even need to ask like can you can you spoon feed me they see her struggling let me help and you could tell them no i haven't no 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 no, i help you i'm gonna help you like they're so fucking nice dude i swear to god i i really want to we should send them something dude yeah we should send them like a gift or something because them girls like you know because we're barely still our body's still healing we're still getting you know to that point where we're getting comfortable um I don't know it, it's mentally draining it's not just physically it's at least for me it was very mentally draining for me uh my sister had a little bit more help because all you guys know her husband came home so she had quite a bit of help with that i was by myself so i had to depend on like my mom coming like to and from my house then i had to jump right back into work right after so yeah mine was a little bit stressful and then i have my kids see that's a whole other story <laughs> okay worst experience Worst experience, I don't know, you go, I need to think about it. I think my worst experience, surgery-wise, was probably like um, day two and day three after surgery. I felt so nauseous, I threw day up Day three, I made you walk with me to the store. <laughs> this bitch. That's a whole nother story time. But I would say, aside from surgery, my flight home worst fucking experience of this whole surgery which story again time. is story time because mom was dope you guys are gonna want to hear mine hers was so ill yeah okay so what was your worst experience surgery wise surgery wise um my titties yeah dude i was telling these motherfuckers <laughs> hey i'm like take them off me take them off me like i don't want them this this, and that like mind you guys like i had nothing you feel me like i had nothing like flat chest like two backs like i'm i'm dead ass i didn't have nothing that's why i wanted to get it kind of all done at the same time i do regret getting all done at the same time so i do recommend that you guys get it um separate procedures just because your healing process will be a lot better but mm -hmm. um yeah, overall, it was that part because I couldn't lay on my stomach. I had to lay on my back, and then they were just so tender. Like, even now, like, my whole fucking body is damn near, like, pretty healed. My boobs still feel tender. Like, they still, like, hurt a little bit and everything. They're still healing a lot. So, boobs. Okay, so this one is a big one that I got asked a lot. The healing process. Okay, so, like, I said, everybody's body's different, so we'll go ahead and go one at a time. Um, she's dumb as fucking don't believe in pain medication. She don't believe in Tylenol. She don't believe in none of that shit. So she's a dumb bitch. Okay. So the let healing. That, let that be said. The healing. I was not on pain pills. I okay. was. Um, so my healing, I do work from home. So that was a plus while I was healing. 
You gotta be in your faha all the time. It's a weird, it's a love hate with the faha because yeah. in the beginning, it's a hate for sure. Hate, hate. You don't want to sleep in it or nothing, but you know you need to. Cause the faha is what sculpts you. You could get lipo and then end up like a fucking rectangle, right. or you can get lipo and end up like a Coca Cola. Right. When um, you put that faha on, it's a whole nother. And it makes you feel good snatch. when you're like, ooh, I look good. Whole nother snatch. I'm fucking Jessica Rabbit with that fucking shit on. Yeah. Um. Um. Okay, so yeah, that's about the faha part. Um, healing wise, let's see. I didn't start feeling better, like where I could, like you know, move around and shit. I would say, <laughs> I, move I would say month three. That's when it was like okay for me. The first month, second month. It's so hard, like, dude, I'm walking hella slow, I'm walking hunchback, like, it was a fucked up feeling. I couldn't, um, like she was saying, my husband was home, so I couldn't wash my own hair. I couldn't lift my arms up, like, to do this, you know, my arms are only going so far. I couldn't scrub my back, I needed yep. to scrub my back, but I had to watch out for my stitches, um, or they were dissolvable, huh? Or did they take those out? I don't know. But I I got lipo holes back there. So I didn't... I was scared to fuck around. I couldn't see what She's, I was... I just felt like shit all day. She was at work. So I'm just like... I don't even know how Fee is doing it. Come to find out this bitch is like all up on her family. Hella pills and shit. <laughs> um, so yeah. I don't know how bitches get their BBL. And then be in the club next week. Even two weeks. Even three weeks. Y'all bitches Dude, for show on perks. For show. Ain't no way. Ain't no way, bro. Y'all is on some perks just to look cute. I reached out to some girls that we had. That I had surgery with. That they were in the recovery home with me. And I told them, like, how are you guys at the club? And shit like that. And you know what's so crazy? They're like, oh, I feel good. It's not, that's what they told me at the time. But now that you say that, they probably were on perks because on perks. those are the same bitches that they brought perks to the recovery home because you could bring your own pills. Mind you, I did too, you feel me? But they brought their own perks and shit. And they were talking about itching or something like that. And like, I don't know. They're like, I have to go, go lay down. I'm itchy. I'm itchy. Like, I don't know. But those are the same bitches that were walking around the recovery house. That the was day one after. thing. If you're going to get a BBL, bro, take some leaf of absence. I swear to God, take a whole month, two months, three months if you can. Because, I don't know. How do you think? Mm -hmm. I felt like mine was horrible. Only, like I keep saying, it's because I got top and bottom done. So instead of just being able to lay on my stomach and everything, like I couldn't because of my boobs, they hurt it. I couldn't lay on, I was scared to lay on my back because I didn't want my ass to come out flat. So I just had a fucked up ass experience overall. Like I was sleeping on the fucking couch, like on my knees, like on some kneeling shit. Like I went through some shit. And then I had to go back to work too. Mm -hmm. I was only home back from Columbia for like three days or mm -hmm. something like that. I came home on a Sunday and I went back to work on Wednesday. Um, that shit was horrible. So having to go and, but I have got these pain pills from Columbia and which they did help so i would take like one in the morning before work but like halfway through work like i would feel like my body tightening up and so my experience sucked so i recommend that if you could take time off from work i would at least take a month off a month at minimum least. minimum if you could afford it or you could again you have the pto from your time from your job yeah like if they're willing to give you that time off mm -hmm. take two to three months off period two to three months yeah i say two to three months because it's not only physically draining it's mentally draining too and that's your body you just want to you don't want to just throw all this money away you want to take care of yourself like inside and outside which it's a lot it's a lot more than i thought it was gonna happen but we made it so for you how long did it take for you to feel better uh we have surgery i want to say the beginning of march so probably a good like I think I want to say like six to eight weeks it took me six to eight weeks by week eight I was feeling better by week nine I was able to go out with my friends and take my faha off for a couple hours and be able to look good and feel good and everything you know definitely if you are thinking about it you need to have somebody like that you trust that's going to be able to help you you know use the bathroom and everything like it's a lot um sleeping wise I slept on my stomach um you know, I just barely started sitting on my ass when I hit month three. As for, like, when I started feeling a little bit more comfortable, I would say that's 
it was like my third month where I was just, you know, like our bodies obviously heal different. She was able to move around a lot quicker than I was. And it could be you know because what? you're at work. No, but and I, you're moving. I think I'm so because I was on I was in pain pills and she wasn't. So when Not I was too. on a pain pill, like mind you, I had I still have to clean my house. I still have to take care of my kids. I still have to go to work and everything. So honestly, like I would take a pain pill and I would try to get all my chores done in the house, you know, get my house back together, do what I have to do because I know that pill is going to kick in. And I think just from the moving around and stuff, mm -hmm. my mobility, I was still keeping my body in motion. So. Cause that's what they told us. Like they wanted us to walk 20 minutes every hour or something like that. And I honestly, like I said, I work from home on a laptop. So I was laid up in bed the entire time. I didn't really want to get up. Bitch, oh. by month two, I was in Vegas. <laughs> I could say now, I fucking love my Faha. Like, I love being oh, in yeah. it. I don't feel how I felt in the beginning about a hatred. Like, I love my shit and it makes me feel... I don't know, I know that my results are going to be that much better. So, definitely. So the first three months, you're supposed to be in your Faha 24-7, you know? And then the three to uh, six to, once you hit three to six months, then you cut down and you're only wearing it half the day or some shit. So definitely wear your faha if you want good results. Wish oh. you're gonna see yourself snatched in it and you're gonna wanna wear it. Oh, the bruising and bloating. Eesh. So um, we're still we're four going. months post -op <laughs> and we're still bloated going. and we still get bruising here and there from the faha, you know. Um, we do wear poise pads, we wear our tank tops, but I think it's just all a part of the process. You know, I have been using the bio oil, the arnica creams and all of that. So it does help. Um, Again, different results, different sisters. I try to use the creams and shit, but... I didn't use the cream. That's different though. She had somebody to rub creams on her and shit. I didn't. So. Yeah, that was the difference. It did probably help her a lot. And then she's getting comforted. But as for the bloating, I reached out to my coordinator recently and I was like, so when is it going to go down? You know, like, is it normal? She goes, um, six to eight months. So we still got, you know, a while to go till we flat flat. But it really is like, um, it's the whole process. Like mm -hmm. even my boobs. Okay. So my boobs, I had got, I guess there's like different ways to insert the implant. You could do it underneath. You could do it through the armpit, like through right here in the armpit. You could do it through the nipple. So mine were through, were done through the nipple. So like he cut like right here, kind of like a smiley face. And then I guess it was like flappy up inserted it underneath the muscle and then sealed it back up so i have like stitches all the way like that all the way through my stitches they are dissolvable so all the ones right here in the smiley face part they all dissolve but i still have a little bit right here and right here where you can see the top and the bottom like the knot so like my boobs are still healing they said it's gonna take like six months but for the most part they dropped because when i first got them no cap they were high they were in my collarbone like my collarbones right here dude they, that's how high they were like mind you look they're right here now they're right here now can you imagine from being up here to up here so they did they dropped but they're still like perky and shit so i like it yeah so you guys can't get discouraged about you know like when they get squishier and squishier every day too when you're like a week post-op two weeks a month two months put it months. this way your body is constantly changing we have people in in the house talking about you look the same you went to columbia da -da 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 -da, like, just to look the <laughs> Bro, same and then and now, now Go put some clothes on. Go put some clothes on. Mickey Minaj. That's what we get called. Mickey Minaj. <laughs> like, okay. I thought I looked the same. And it's like, I, dude, I'll be wearing sweatpants and a fucking t-shirt. Put on clothes. How much more? Yeah. So, definitely. Um, it's dude, I've already experienced that at my job. Them trying to tell me, like, okay, I just recently quit from there. Like, a couple, like, what, a week, two weeks ago. But anyways um they were office job we were talking about they were over there telling me like you can't wear this you can't wear that and everything and i'm like why these people are wearing them too like my dresses that i wear bro they go over my kneecap my kneecaps are not even showing on them like i don't wear them skin tight or nothing but i have a nice body now like i'm curvy in my dresses like i don't you know I, and it's not like i have any cleavage showing bro or discrimination like that. is real with bbls i swear to god yeah I swear to God, it don't matter if you're covered up or not. They Ooh, want everything. Okay, let's ask way. this question because I, I don't know if it's in your little list, but I wonder if people ask about it. Okay. Would you go, after everything that you've been through, would you go back for a second round? Now. Okay, go. Yes. Okay, when you when you were still in recovery, like week two and shit, did you think you were going to go back for a second round? No. 
<laughs> no. Okay, so I'm like, I don't know how bitches do this shit. It's so disgusting. The fuck? You're in so much pain. These bitches are just unhappy with their body. If they're gonna go through this again, I'll never do. Bro, I'm telling you, we're gonna upload footage. Watch. I look fucked up, drugged up, dumbass fuck talking about. I don't condone this yeah. shit. <laughs> Any bitch that wants to get it done, don't do it. That's no. was like day two and three for me. So, but. No, I tell everybody when I'm like, when they're now, like, oh, would you, would you do it? I'm like, totally worth it. The pain, everything worth it. I'd do it again. Mm -hmm. But I feel happy with my results now, so I don't. I'm happy. I'm not satisfied. It was a nice first round. It was cute. They did the sculpting. They got rid of all the back fat. They did good on my stomach. But I just want to be a little bit more bigger on the hips. And I want, I, re I really want like how they be doing like the contour and the app. The, mm -hmm. and the ab sketching sketching mm -hmm. or whatever it is i want to get that done hella bad on, on my stomach so i want to have like that swimmer's body i know one thing um that i wanted to bring up in this video contour faja that's the brand that we used and i fucking love it like you know i we tried another faja another brand that our recovery house had you know gone through yeah and you put it on your shape's your your shape is not there. You put on the contour faja, hourglass, bitch. Immediately, like, and it's gonna keep you sucked in like that. Like, and it's training your body to be like that. So I definitely recommend the brand Contour Fajas, and it's size to your body measurement. So it's not like a small, medium, or large. Like you have to send in your body measurements, and we actually bought ours out there so we, we while we were out in Colombia, we went and we got like measured and everything and then they came to the recovery house and dropped our shit off see stuff like that i feel like i don't know okay so for her she was already gone she uh, mind you she did do it by herself she went to go get her contour faja by herself but me i don't like doing stuff by myself like i'm very codependent so for me to have to go like and request for a driver, go get in the car by myself, go get measured. Like even though this doesn't sound like a big deal, dude, I was scared. Hey, like, but this is why you have me though. You wouldn't have had that contour faja and we would have been shaped ugly. So when you follow my lead, it's never really been bad <laughs> ever. Like she gets me <laughs> into so much shit, bro. Let my mom tell it. She's always like, you always listen to her. She's such a dumbass, and, she, and this is now. Why the? Why do you always teach your sister to t tell her to do this? And yeah. Okay, guys. So we're gonna go ahead and close out the vlog here. I think we covered everything. Um, you know, still yet to come is our story whole, time. All our fucking horrific story times of what we went through because there's a lot of shit. You know, we were there for two weeks, so we do got some story times for y'all. We do have um, footage that's just strictly of Colombia, so you guys could see mm -hmm. the culture, see you guys see the recovery house the mall everything so beginning to end so this was just us telling you a little bit about mm -hmm. it now our next video we're gonna show you everything right <laughs> from beginning to end right okay well like comment and subscribe oh let's do a fucking giveaway so we're gonna go yes. ahead and do um wanna do a starbucks jamba okay. juice it's we'll hot. do jamba juice it's okay. hot it's hot we're gonna go ahead and do a jamba juice giveaway card giveaway so in order to enter into our raffle go ahead and just leave a comment so yeah <laughs> like comment and subscribe fucking comment for your fucking jamba juice entry but all right we're gonna wrap it up because i gotta go to work hopefully um you know this shit takes off i won't have to be going to work no more and we'll just be able to wake up and period. vlog period um, period period all right <laughs> but you guys get to see us from the beginning all right all right bye, bye.